Hey, my name's Will, this is my friend Luke, and I'm gonna teach him to make a game for his first time from scratch using Unity, and we are gonna be making a game like this. This is a WebGL, and we've got this little tank, and we're moving around, and we get to a tower, oh no. And we shoot the towers away. That's cool. And then if we get shot, kablammo! That's what we're going to be building. So how do you how do you, how do you feel? You ready? I saw none of that, so I'm very excited. <laughs> so let's continue. <laughs> Why don't you guys share your screen, Sir Luke? Did you enable it this time? Nope. I, why do I invite you to these? Good sir, where do I go? Where do you think you go, friend? To the wide world web. Indubitably. And then, what, we're doing this in Unity, right? We are, so, yeah. Like Unity. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Wait, is it really available? Wow, that's new. That is new. So we actually want to download Unity Hub. You got two options there. And yeah, it's better to just download the hub because that way you can keep track of the different versions of Unity that you have installed. It's, Okie dokie. It's the hub in which you download them. I'm just clicking things. And you've got your... Over. Unity Hub will also have all of your projects on there as well. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing we have to add a version. Yeah, that right? installed really fast. Yeah, you're right. So that's the most recent version is 2023.2. So we'll just click next and go with that. Isn't that in the future? Oh, never mind. It's complicated. Uh, Here we've got Visual Studio Community. We're going to install that. That's good. But if you scroll down, oh, there we go. Look at that. Automatically set. Web GL build. We're going to check that too. And that's going to install as well. So when we're done with the game, in a couple videos from now, when we build it, it's going to do that. So, yep. yeah, we'll click next. And then do you I, agree? I read it. You did. I saw you read it. It's mm -hmm. They say something about taking your mortgage or whatever, but it's cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's, I don't have one. That's right. Good answer. Okay, we're installed. Ready to go. Right now you're technically on the installs tab and so we'll need okay. to click on the projects tab. Cool, and from here we'll add a new one. So we'll click that blue new button. And you got a couple options here. You got 3D, 2D, 5D, 7D, um, depends on your perspective of dimensions. But really it doesn't matter whether we choose 2D or 3D because we can change that when we're in the app. So right now, new Unity project, we can call that whatever you would like. Remember, we're thinking tanks, shooting stuff, forever. Type, mm, yes, I love it. Create that. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna drive around in a king tiger, right? Yeah, absolutely, we are. Just a little short, stubby, cute one. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, tiger, tough tiger, mm -hmm. cute tough tiger with like brass knuckles and stuff. We're installed. We're loaded. We're ready to go. It's actually really quick. So I'll give you a quick rundown of the different components in Unity, and then we'll move on to downloading okay. our first asset. Sounds so I'm going to request remote control. And I'm going to access your bank information. Mm, for free, didn't. Nah, OK. So we've got a couple panels here. This is our first one. Uh, I'll just focus here. This is called the hierarchy. Okay. And why it's called the hierarchy is Beyond me, I have no idea. But it contains everything that's inside of the scene. If you click on the main camera, that's the same main camera. If you click on this directional light, that's that light. So everything you'll see in this, which is called the scene, this is the perspective the developer has. So everything that's in here is going to be listed right here. So then this is the inspector. And this is gonna contain all the different components of each object inside of the game. So okay. if we click on the camera, 
for instance. Ah. Yeah, we've got here, I'm going to collapse them. Just to make it a little more visible, you've got your mm -hmm. transform the camera, which is a, probably a script that was built in Unity. I say probably because this is it comes with the object and and we don't need to edit it. Um, sure. And then we've got the audio listener here. So if we have many cameras, we we'll want to turn that off. So every single object inside of here will have its different components. This one has three components, and the transform. Every single object is going to have a transform. And the transform tells where it is in the world space. So, you know, this is on the X, which would be relating to this red here, which is relating to this one. So if we hold on, click and hold here and move it, you can see the X is changing in the transform. Yep, yep, yep. And notice the greens here. So it's aiming here, same thing. We click and hold, that goes up and down. And then the blue goes forward and, and backward, which is your Z. And these are, you're handling your rotations. And if we take this, and here's my little suggestion. We can change it later if you're, if you're not interested, but I'm, I'm gonna change your orientation of everything here. I like to have mine right here. This is the game view. This is what the, the player sees. Nothing. And yeah, right now, nothing. You know, if we, if we just took a quick second here to create a cube, which we can delete later. This is what the player sees. And so if we take our main camera, we can rotate it a bit. Goes to the side. And we get the idea here. As we change this sure. transform, it relates directly to that camera. Uh, same okay. thing with the light too. And let's get rid of this guy. We do not need it. Cool. So that covers the hierarchy, the scene view, the inspector, the project is going to have everything inside of the project. <laughs> Even if it's not in the scene, these are, are available to us. So we can have many different folders in here as we develop this. This is kind of your um, directory, you know, that you got your different folders and stuff. Finder for Mac, what's it called for yeah, PC? Yeah, yeah. File Explorer. Explorer, yeah, cool. Awesome. I think that's all the components. What questions you got? What questions do I have? Uh, what do we do first? Oh, I like that. You're, you're all, you're, yeah. Also, can I touch my mouse again? Because that was kind of invading my privacy. So. I thought you had consent. Or I, mm. I mean, I had. You gave consent. I had. Okay. No, it's fine. I mean, I I thought we were there. But um, I can take it slower. I, you know, we can work our way. Just, it's cool. I want to push things. Um, yeah, so let's go to your browser. And rather than Unity install, we're just going to go to the, I search for Unity Asset Store. And look at that. Okay. Cool. So we're going to look for the word tanks. Awesome. Bat tank. That is a really, that's like the bat, isn't that? That's the, yeah, it is the bat tank. It's from uh, Dark Knight. Dude. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, yeah, we're going to go for the free one. It's that fourth one there up in the top right. Yeah. We are going to grab that one. That's fine, I guess. Sorry, not as cool. I want to make this accessible to anyone. So we'll click the blue add to my assets button. Okay. Don't yeah, I won't I won't look. And then open it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And that'll direct you direct you directly to Unity? Directly. Like a director. Look at all these like garbage. Yep, we will download that one. So, so this is the one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this thing? That's it. I'm gonna download that guy. Now here's the trick though, we're not gonna import all of it. Because watch this. Then... When you click the import button down in the bottom right, it's going to give you a message. It's 
going to say, hey, we're about to change everything in your in your entire project. So that's OK. We're going to click import, but we're we're going to get around that. Definitely don't want that. We do. We're going to click import. Yeah, trust me. It's cool. Believe me. Trust me. Yeah, it's cool. I got you. Trust fall. Trust fall. Skip. Which one do I want to do? Skip? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So for here, we're going to um, un we're gonna click none. There's a lot of stuff that we don't want. This thing? Yeah. Sometimes if okay. you're dealing with a brand new asset like this that's got lots of different options, sometimes it's good to have one project first, dump everything in as a test project, and then that way you kind of know how it's going to affect the project. This is what I did. This is the way we know what to do. So we're looking for the models folder. We're just going to grab models. <laughs> this thing? Yeah, that's it. I like everything in there. It's totally cool. So notice okay. they're FBX files. That's the, what, Autodesk, I think. It's the Autodesk format. Uh, it's accepted in Blender and Unity. So uh, let's just click materials just in case. I want to make sure we get those two. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. No, those are harmless. So we'll click the import button. We're just going to grab those two. We don't need animations for a tank, which is really nice. Uh, so we won't really be messing around with the animator much here in the initial part. And it is there. Cool. So we can click the X. Mm. Awesome. So let's put our tank in the middle. Actually, before we do, let's make a plane. So we'll right click anywhere in an empty spot in our hierarchy. There you go. We'll go 3D object. And we'll go plane, kind of in the middle. Wonderful. And now we will toss our tank in there. So if you click on the models folder, and you can drag and drop the tank onto the plane it is fine. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. Yeah. It's kind of cute. Ugly. Uh, uh, ugly? What do you mean? He's adorable. Very cute. Look at him. He's got his short little stubby cannon and everything. We're going to click the add component button. What? Where? Oh, uh, in the oh, here? inspector. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. While well, clicked on the tank, or uh, well, while well, clicked on the parent of the tank. Actually, that that is important. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's a thing that kind of got me when I first started with Unity too. Yeah, if you click anything underneath it, bunch of things in here. Yeah, there's a lot of rigs and stuff, which are really cool. Watch this. If you click the turret, which is the bottom one, there you go, and then change the Y rotation. I thought you. Yeah, isn't that cool? Oh. Yeah. You can even change the tracks. We're not really going to bother because of the view of the camera. It would be a lot of work for n no real benefit. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, you want to make sure you're on the very top, the parent. You don't have to be, but in our circumstances, what we want to do. So click Add Component and type in the word Character Controller. Great. Character Controller is great. It's an all-encompassing package from Unity. It's got a bunch of goodies in there. Um, Let's see what we got. There should be a green capsule. Unfortunately, we have green on green with our little... little. I see it. There it is. Uh, we want to make sure it's in the middle of it. One of the best ways to do is to click the 2D button. It's in the middle. Wow. It's quite large. We'll click the 2D button. I think it's going to make your life a lot easier. That? Yeah, there you go. We can get a better view of it. We At least we can see the bottom. No, you didn't... You, yeah, so maybe change the Y to one in the center. Yeah, there you go. That looks about right. I think so. Do we need to make it fatter? No, I would say this is fine. The reason why is th the only thing this is going to be detecting is collisions from bullets. Maybe we'll have a couple obstacles that it might bump into. But so if I want the player to lose, I make it bigger. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Especially if there's a bullet like really far away from them and it collides into that green capsule and they still blow up and die and they get really mad at the developer, that email is going straight to you. That Twitter post? For you, my teacher. <laughs> I like your approach. Great. Now we're going to add a script to this beautiful tank. Is that also an add component? Or? Yeah, there you go. 
And I just search script or? Well, we, this is not only where we select script, script, but we also name our script too. Oh. A little bit confusing. That's weird. It is kind of weird. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, I think you can type script in the new script. Um, but for right now we can name it whatever we want. So I think, what do you think? What should we name this? I'm thinking tank controller. What do you got? Um, I guess. Okay. That might, might be appropriate. Tank controller. I guess we can do something that makes sense. All right. And then we'll click new script. Okay. See, oh, so you could have just done it here. Yeah. I see what you mean. And once this refreshes, there you go. Now it's fully implemented. You can double click on the dark gray words. Yeah, I don't know why I said gray. Gray words. Gray with an E, not an A. Beautiful. If you wouldn't... Just too good to me. All right, great. Our first set of code, let's steal it. And the reason why we're going to steal it from the Unity documentation is... Uh, Unity Docs has a great source, and it's good to start from there, especially okay. when you're working on new stuff. So let's look for. We're gonna look for steel. It's close. We're gonna look for um, Unity character controller move. Yeah, you got it right there. Look at that. It's that popular, and we'll click on the first one. Definitely not because you searched for this before, and we will copy all the body of the class. Now, the first three lines, you see how those say using? Mm -hmm. the, that's C sharp. That's C sharp saying we're snagging some libraries from other classes, which are going to okay. have lots of pages of code. You can reference that with your code. If you're able to swing back between the two really easily, you can see that you already have using. That's perfect. Ah. Yeah, you have those. And if you had them twice, Unity's going to freak out. It's going to tell us, hey, you've, you're using Unity, you're e. using twice. And then notice the next line, line five is similar public to that next class. line. Yeah. Yeah, because this is also public class, right? Exactly. And mono behavior. Mono behavior. Mono, and notice the colon, that means that it's inherited by, which is, it's fine. That, yeah, it's it means that it gets all the information from the mono behavior class. But really, we don't need to worry about that. We can grab everything that starts with the private we can grab everything from your private and, and grab it down all the way. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Paste. There you go. Bam. That's a uh, lot of code that I didn't write. Yeah, we'll walk through it real quick. So first couple lines are just a very general overview. This is a very common, this is what we're going to be using in C Sharp lines 7 through 12 in that section right below are they like variables or something exactly yeah i, I don't want to say global because you know right now we've got our tank controller and we have our our little mini tank we have yeah but the camera has its own script and it doesn't have access to these directly so like class scope yeah you got it within the class scope cool and we've got a couple variables there the first one, actually, let's keep with the general, sorry. So after the variables, the next function is the start function. That one is called once the object is created. And then the next created? one. Created? What do you mean by created? Yeah, when you start, it creates an instance of the object when Unity started. And that's when this object will begin running. So for us, we already created our tank and it exists. If we had another object like a prefab that would be instantiated in the middle during the game, then it would this start function would begin once that object was created. For instance, we're gonna have a bullet. And when the bullet travels through the air, the moment that it's created, it'll run its start function. Okay. Yeah. And then update function happens 60 times per second. So we've got, you know, your frames per second. And so this is being called a lot. It's almost like a, a while loop kind of. And so all of these things inside of it are gonna constantly be checked. Cool, so we've got, we'll, we'll get into the details of all this, but for right now, let's just hit save. Let's get it to sync up to Unity. 
Oh, does it just happen automatically in Unity? It does. Once you hit save in in your IDE. It'll... Which is, what is an IDE? IDE is where you type in your code. And for us, it was mm. Microsoft uh, uh, that. What is that? Visual, Visual Studio, Studio code. code. Yeah. I is like interactive developer environment, I think. Sounds Probably good. something like that. Yeah. With that. Well, every time you click save in your IDE, Unity is going to recognize the changes and then re-import that specific script. Okay. Uh, so from here, let's hit play. Let's see what happens. You can do that by clicking the play button in the top or holding control and press P, command P on a Mac. And we got an There's error message. Error. Uh, you can kind of see it there, but if you click the console tab. This thing? Yeah. You can see it a little bit more clearly. Look it's at that. happening a lot. Yeah, every frame, multiple times a frame. But look at the one right above it. Can't add component character controller to tank. Such a component is already added. And then it gives us a line on the error. Can you see where it says assets tank controller CS21? Uh, this tells, thing? Yeah, that tells us the issues on line 21. So let's get out of play mode. You can hardly see the difference. It does make it a little bit more dark when you're in play mode. Mm. So if we go to VS Code. Okay. One second. It said 21, right? 21. So line 21, this one is... Notice it says grounded player. So it has... What is grounded player? If you... If you double click on grounded player, you tell me. <laughs> double double click on grounded player for me. It should highlight. It already was. It kind of does. Fine. Can you do Control F? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I like. I like it really like highlighted, very bold. If you scroll up all the way, let's look at the variable. So it has to be declared somewhere. Whether bool. Bool. Yeah. Do you know what a boolean is? Yeah. But what is a boolean, William? A boolean is one of the simplest variables you have. It's zero mm -hmm. or one, true or false. Mm -hmm. In our case, and it can only be those things. Yeah, yeah. In our case, we've got grounded player. So this is saying whether the player, or in our case, the tank is grounded. It's grabbing that information. It's getting Wait, a s grounded yeah. is like on the ground. Is our tank ever going to jump? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is a jumping tank. Yeah. That's confusing, but okay. Really? You know, you, I think I like the idea of a jumping take. I think it's fun. Yeah. So, grounded player gets assigned the value controller dot is grounded. Double click on the word controller. Where's that come from? Uh, there you go, line 21. Yeah. So, that comes from line 7. It's a variable from the character controller variable. So, it gets declared there. And then on line 16, it gets assigned mm. game object. So the script, which is the tank controller script, when we call the word game object, uh, that's referring to the tank in a whole, as opposed to just the script itself. If we replace that word with this, it would be the script. But since we're saying game object, then it says add component character controller. That's a problem. Well, but we already added yeah. the character controller. And I think we, I like what we did where we added it manually because we had to customize it a little bit. We had to change mm. its height. So let's change the word add in add component to the word get. And we'll click save and that should fix it. And then we'll hit play, see what we get. No errors. Beautiful. Now click inside of the player's Whoa. perspective. There you go. Wow. Now that was one thing that I do want to keep in mind is you clicked in, which is great. You clicked on the game tab first. If you click on anywhere else, your keys on the keyboard won't play anymore. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be on, you got to be on there. And you can use WASD, and you can use the arrows. And that's that's in the code that we copied from the documentation. Oh. The spacebar. No. Yeah, kind of funky. Okay, cool. We can clean that up in the next video. But for right now, we got a moving tank. It doesn't shoot, but it moves around. It moves around very quickly. I noticed that if you have both, if you have two directions, it'll go in like a diagonal, which is kind of cool. Oh, like that. Yeah, like that. And then if you go from. 
well, that ruined the whole tutorial. It's done. Okay. Uh, so if I go from uh, what? Uh, if you go from one angle, so like up, and if you switch to the left, it should rotate a little bit. So you're going right now, you're going from forward to back. Yeah, see how it's got a little bit of a turn going on? Which is kind of cool. Hmm. That's part of the character controller. I did that? You did. Well done, Luke. Wow. I'm proud of you. There you did. There it is. Oh, make sure you save it. Let's let's un unplay, and then we're going to save our game. We're in a good spot, and we'll pick it up next time. We'll clean it up. We'll add some more code, have it jump and shoot, and we will have some fun. Bye.